Hello, welcome to Anita the Pedagogue channel. Today we continue with our literature poems analysis. We are looking at the poem Funeral Blues by W.H. Auden. Let's look at the content of our lesson today. We'll go through the biography of the poets, the title, the structure, its analysis, the literary devices, the themes, and I'll share with you some likely examination questions. Let's begin with a biography of our poets. He was a British American poet, one of the most influential poets of the 20th century. He was born in York, England and educated at Oxford University. After graduating, he moved to Berlin where he became involved in the literary scene. In 1939, he moved to the United States where he lived for the rest of his life. Odin's poem is known for its intellectual complexity its use of irony and satire, and its exploration of themes such as love, death, and the nature of reality. He was also a gifted translator, and he translated works by poets such as Rainer Maria, Rilke, Bertolt Brecht, and Paul Valery. Auden's work has been praised for its originality, its technical skill, and its emotional power. He has been awarded numerous prizes, including the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1948 and the Bollingen Prize in 1956. He is considered one of the most important poets of the 20th century, and his work continues to be read and enjoyed by people all over the world. Let's go on now and look at the title Funeral Blues. The word funeral informs the reader that the poem concerns the death or burial of a person. In addition, the word blue suggests this funeral's dramatic influence. In the poem, the speaker shares a dramatic way he grieves. The poem funeral blues. Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone, silence the pianos with muffled drum, bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. Let aeroplanes circle morning overhead. Scribbling on the sky the message he is dead. Put crib bowls around the white necks of the public doves. Let the traffic policemen wear black cotton gloves. He was my north, my south, my east and west. My working week and my Sunday rest. My noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. The stars are not wanted now. Put out everyone. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood. For nothing now can come to any good. This is a beautiful, powerful poem. Let's go on and look at the structure of this poem. It is a 16-line poem with four stanzas. And if you look at each stanza, each stanza is made up of four lines. And that is what we call quatrains. These quatrains follow an A-A-B-B rhyming pattern. It also rhymes in couplets. So if you look at the first two lines, telephone, the end word telephone rhymes with boon from the second line. And I've highlighted the rhyming words. These are the end rhymes and they all come in twos. And that's why we say they rhyme in couplets. Again, this poem uses imperative sentences and begins with a second person narrative. Stop all the clocks. You stop all the clocks. So it's instructing the people around. The poet instructs the people around. And that is an authoritative and command way of giving instructions. And it then moves on to the first person narrative point of view, we see that in the third stanza, where he goes on to talk about, I thought that love would last forever, I was wrong. So we can say the poem starts with the second person narrative and moves on to the first person narrative point of view. Also, there is the use of phrases, lists or patterns of two or three words which have been broken up by commas and semicolons creating caesura, which is the deliberate break in or between lines of poetry. So a lot of lines have been broken um, with commas, with semicolons, 
and that causes caesarean. This poem can be described as an elegy, a tribute or a poem for the dead, and the tone is that of anguish and pain, which causes the reader to feel sad for the speaker's loss of a loved one. Let's now move on to the analysis of the very first stanza or the first quatrain. So this initial stanza uses imperatives or command verbs from the speaker to the people and world around him as he orders them to come to a standstill. He wants the clock to be stopped and all communications off. Cut off the telephone. He demands that a dog be prevented from barking by giving it a juicy bone. The speaker requires silence and wants the sweet melodies from a piano replaced with quieter drums or muffled drums which represent funeral melodies. In line 4, the reader is informed of the reason for the commands given by the speaker which is due to a funeral which is symbolized by the use of the word coffin. The speaker now demands some human connection as he calls for mourners to join him to grieve. In the second quatrain of stanza, we see the speaker does not want to grieve alone, but wants nature and the world's people to know and partake in his grief. Using the personification, let aeroplanes circle mourning overhead, scribbling on the sky. He wants the aeroplanes to mourn and write it in the sky for all to see that his loved one is dead. He requires doves to mourn with him by putting on crib bows and the traffic policemen to wear black cotton gloves to symbolize their grief and show they are also grieving. Let's move on to the third quatrain, that's the third stanza. Here the speaker describes his loved one mainly. Metaphorically, he compares his loved one to the world using the cardinal points, north, south, east, west. This ultimately shows that the deceased is truly dear to the speaker's heart and will have no sense of direction due to the departed absence. He addressed the deceased as my working week and my Sunday rest. His loved one was an integral part of his daily life. Describing him on as my moon, my midnight, also shows the departed loved one defined the speaker's time. My talk, my song, also indicates the deceased was his source of communication, joy and entertainment. The final line of this stanza expresses the speaker's deep sorrow and disappointment for expecting their love to last forever, as we hear and see in fairy tales. Reality has dawned on him that once a loved one dies, the love between the two is curtailed with zero hope of love again. Let's move to the fourth quatrain, and that's the last stanza. The speaker again uses an anguished tone to demand that the celestial objects, the stars, be put out completely. The moon should be packed up and the sun dismantled. This will cause darkness to come upon the universe. And all this shows that the speaker has lost hope since these symbolize light and hope, the moon and the stars. The speaker also wants the ocean poured out and the forestry swept up. This indicates that the speaker is opposing the world's existence and demands the world to come to an end as it's not worth existing without his loved one. In the final line, he exaggerates that nothing positive can be achieved without his beloved and this shows the speaker's deep grief and mourning for the deceased. Let's move on now and look at the literary devices. There's the use of alliteration. We see the repetition of the consonant sound K, clocks, and cats. So the CC, which sound as K, K. Working week, we see that in line 10. There's also the use of anaphora or repetition. My has been repeated so many times and also let's. My working week, my Sunday rest, my noon, my midnight, my talk, my song, and also let the mourners come, let aeroplanes, let the traffic policemen, and these are all for emphasis and also to create some melody in the poem. There's also the use of hyperbole. We see that in stanza 4, 
There's lots of exaggeration. The stars are not wanted now. Put out everyone. I mean, it's impossible to go put out the, the stars. Pack up the moon. It's an exaggeration. How do we pack up the moon? How do we dismantle the sun? Pour away the ocean. These are exaggerations. They are hyper bullies. And also, for nothing now can come to any good. Of course, there's always a ray of positivity I mean, in all situations, so it's also an exaggeration to say for nothing now can come to any good. There's also the use of enjambment. We see enjambment in lines 5 and 6 and in lines 15 and 16. So we have let aeroplanes circle morning overhead scribbling on the sky and we also have pour away the ocean, sweep up the wood and it continues for nothing now can come to any good. Let's move on now and also look at metaphor. He was my north, my south, my east and west, my working week, my Sunday rest, my noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. So here there, there is a comparison and the speaker is comparing his loved one to the cardinal points, to his working week and his Sunday rests and also comparing the speaker to his noon, his midnight, his talk and then his song as well. Symbolism. The coffin represents a funeral, crib balls represent mourning clothes and the doves represent peace. There's also the use of personification in lines 5 and 6. Let the aeroplane circle mourning for the aeroplane to mourn. That is personifying it and also the ability to scribble on the sky. It's also the use of onomatopoeia, mourning in line 5. There's also the use of rhymes. So we have a lot of rhyming words telephone bone, drum come, overhead dead, doves gloves, west rest, song bong, one, sun wood and good don't forget to like comment share and subscribe we move on now to the themes let's look at the theme grief and loss the poem delves into the theme of profound grief and loss resulting from the death of the speaker's loved one the speaker's emotions are raw and intense expressed through powerful action verbs in imperative sentences throughout the poem the initial shock from the news which causes him to demand silence and for the tunes of a piano to be replaced with muffled drums, which represent the solemnity of death and funerals. In the second stanza, the speaker desires the world to mourn with him through vivid imagery. He desires aeroplanes to mourn and scribble his dead in the sky. He calls for doves and the traffic policemen to dress in mourning attires. The poem captures the overwhelming sense of despair and longing experienced in the face of loss. In the first stanza, the speaker calls for darkness and emptiness upon the world due to his intense grief. He says, pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. This poem highlights how grief and loss can cause a lack of hope in mourners. Our next theme is the fleetingness of life or communal and individual nature of grief. Another theme presented in Funeral Blues is the recognition of life's fleeting nature. The poem emphasizes the temporary nature of existence, suggesting that everything else becomes inconsequential in the face of death. The poem's tone conveys a sense of agency and the need to acknowledge and appreciate the brevity of life. The speaker of the poem is puzzled that his loved one is dead, but the world keeps moving. He demands that the clocks be stopped and all communication cease. Cut the telephone. He personally grieves his loved one. He also calls for people to bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. This invitation by the speaker is his, is his call for others to grieve with him, acknowledging the short-lived life of his loved one. Grief is private and unique to each person, but also people come together to mourn when a loved one passes on. Let's move on to the power and limitations of love as a theme. 
Love is a central theme in funeral blues, illustrating its transformative power while exploring its limitations. The speaker's grief is intensified by the profound love they had for the deceased. The speaker spends time describing his relationship with the speaker in the test stanza. He explains that this deceased loved one was his world, north, south, east, west, and also part of his daily life. The poem showcases the all-consuming nature of love and the overwhelming sense of emptiness that follows its absence. At the same time, it suggests that even the strength of love cannot prevent or remedy death. The speaker explains, I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. The speaker also feels some disappointment due to his truncated love with his loved one due to death. Love is usually portrayed as a powerful force between people, which has the connotation of the happily ever after idea, which we read in fairy tales, but instead, love can end. Let's move on now to some likely examination questions. How does Auden convey the speaker's intense grief and loss in funeral blues? Analyze the use of imagery, tone, and language in the poem. Discuss the theme of transient nature of life as portrayed in funeral blues. How does the poem emphasize the fleeting nature of existence? Explore the role of love in funeral blues and its significance in the speaker's experience of grief. How does love both provide solace and, contrib and contribute to the speaker's anguish? Analyze the structure of funeral blues and its impact on the poem's overall meaning. How does the poem's form contribute to its themes? Discuss the symbolism employed in funeral blues and its contribution to the poem's emotional impact. How does the use of repetition in funeral blues enhance the poem's themes and create a sense of rhythm and agency? Examine the role of the funeral as a metaphor in the poem. How does it symbolize the speaker's mourning process and the need for closure? What is the significance of the color blue in funeral blues? How does it contribute to the portrayal of grief and melancholy in the poem? Discuss the use of hyperbole and exaggeration in funeral blues to intensify the speaker's emotions. How does this heightened language contribute to the overall impact of the poem? Compare and contrast funeral blues with other poems that explore themes of grief and loss. How does Auden's poem stand out in its treatment of these themes? Now this brings us to the end of our discussion of the poem Funeral Blues. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to this channel. Until I come your way again, keep learning and be the best version of yourself.